As these keynotes illustrate, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. Previously, we have had one dominant technology representing a jump into a new industrial revolution, such as steam, electricity, or electronics. These jumps are often referred to as Gutenberg moments. And now it is different. It is said that the fourth industrial revolution is a combination of at least 12 of these Gutenberg moments, and they all occur simultaneously. To mention a few, AI, big data, blockchain, robotics, smart homes, and IoT. To add to it, these new technologies can be combined in a countless number of ways. And this changes business models, market positions, and it changes how we work. This digital wave means that we have to learn faster, deeper, and broader than ever before. Norway needs companies that increase their expertise in digitalization and invest in new sustainable technology for a better tomorrow. But what makes a company, a technology, or even energy sustainable? It must have three pillars, which we will take into the discussion today. Economy, society, and the environment. Or said more easily, it has to be good for both planet, people, and profit. And today, we will talk about energy, technology, and digitalization, and how that plays a major role in reaching the sustainable development goals. But what does that actually mean? Today, we have with us Steinar Sønsteby from Atea. Welcome. David Hansen from Microsoft. We have Geir Hoy from Kongsberg. And we have Erik Aspeset from Tafjord. Welcome. So I want to ask a question to the four of you, actually. So we'll start with one of you. But why is your company a part of the solution for a more sustainable world? Maybe, Geir, would you like to go first? Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, um, Kongsberg, we are a technology uh, corporation. Um, I, we like to call ourselves uh, an ocean expert. Uh, approximately 80% of what we are doing and our technology is either direct or indirect related to the ocean. And um, I think sustainability is nothing we started to think about yesterday in Kongsberg. This is something that we have been doing uh, over decades, um, continuously trying to you know, if make uh, the shipping more efficient by, uh, and, and then take down the fuel consumption. Uh, we try to do the shipping more safe, uh, more productive. So um, we strongly believe that technology is an enabler for us to achieve several of these uh, sustainability goals uh, for the world. And when I say technology, I actually mean people, because uh, without people, we wouldn't have any technology. So I think it's a combination of you know, continuously try to improve uh, and understand the business that you are serving. Uh, and continuously try to, to improve that by using uh, technology uh, from Kongsberg or and also from our, all our sub suppliers mm -hmm. and combine that in the best possible way. Steinar, how does your company, Atea, as how are you part of the solution for a more sustainable tomorrow? Uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm, I'm both scared and, and really excited about answering that question because <laughs> it is difficult. I think. Um, We've matured, all of us, but also Atea over the last 10 years. Um, we try to inspire our employees, because I, I do agree this is about people and technology. And we're trying to inspire our people, for them to inspire our customers, to find new ways of using existing technology. Because I believe that technology mostly, at least in my line of business, is actually there to solve a lot of problems um, that people are thinking about these days. So it's about inspiring, creating a culture where people go out and say, you know, what can we help you with? We have all this technology, but what is your challenges? You know, is it to have a more diverse workforce and how can you get there? Is it, 
you know, getting more talent and how can we help educate or, or, or inspire people to come to you from educational institutions? Uh, is it purely video and being, you know, remote workers? Or, you know, what is it really you want to solve? So mm. inspiration of people to use technology. Mm. For a better tomorrow. Eric, how about Tafiwen? Well, it's always difficult to say something about the future. Um, but I think most of the technology experts today, they agree on that the future is electric. And we as uh, uh, Tafjord and Mörnet, we are the leading uh, power and grid company between Bergen and Trondheim. And we provide virtually and concretely power to the people, <laughs> more specifically renewable power to the people, and thereby contributing to the UN sustainability goal number seven, clean energy for all. We also provide connectivity to the same people through high-speed fiber-based internet, um, and thereby enabling active part participation and shaping of the digital future by all of us, both as individuals and companies in our region. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. David? Well, you have the privilege of listening to my colleague, Per uh, Christian, talking from, well, he's actually from Olesen, so uh, <laughs> I'm sort of replacing him here. I, I used to be his boss, though, so, but he moved to our headquarters uh, and outlining what we have on the program of uh, spending energy smarter and eventually also being able to roll back on the carbon footprint of our uh, global uh, and, if I must say, a quite sizable company. Uh, but let me address it more specifically in a Norwegian context. Mm. Microsoft in Norway has typically been just a seller of uh, software. So you couldn't make an easier strategy if you want to have a low footprint in the world. But we're actually now moving more and more into uh, continuing with program uh, delivering software. But of course, now being more the provider of an infrastructure that is actually the basis of the platform for many other companies to do their things smarter. So where someone brings the power, and we need that to fuel the um, data centers, we can also bring uh, the compute power closer to people more in a more efficient and more rational way. And that transformation means actually that we are taking on much more, mm. but that also means that we are now accountable for much more. It goes to how we spend energy, as said, and how that affects the climate, but also how we uh, use water resources. Uh, and you will see Microsoft also come out with uh, concrete pledges uh, on how we uh, have a footprint on the use of soil or land, because they are spacious, these data centers. So the cloud, although it sounds very digital and, and virtual, it is very physical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I think um, at least uh, uh, a lot of the big companies in Norway, of course, most of us know Microsoft and we use Microsoft services and products. Um, and a lot of things are happening in the cloud. And Gad, you probably use a lot of uh, Microsoft's utilities and services and big data and clouding. And I think it might be interesting to see how do you in Kongsberg work with the big data in the ocean industry today? Yes, we are a big customer of Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may I just uh, you know, go back to the first question? Because I think since we are in Sunnmøre, I think it's important to maybe mention that I think you know, if you look at uh, Sundmøre's history and Norway's history, I'm quite optimistic that you know, because we have so much knowledge uh, over decades and hundreds of years uh, from the ocean, uh, and by utilizing uh, the existing technology and, and, and new technology uh, going forward, I'm, I'm quite optimistic that we, we're going to be able to solve a lot of these uh, sustainability goals. And then, of course, data. Um, we, have, we don't have little data. We have a huge number of data. But I think the big question is, uh, are we utilizing the data uh, to you know, become better? That's right. Uh, and uh, obviously, Kongsberg, as a technology provider, um, I think it's both for us and for our customers important to collect data and, and, and kind of structure it to get hold of the data that you want to look into more uh, pre precisely. That will help you to improve your, both your product, but also your operation. Uh, and you can also measure yourself on your targets for emission, for example. Mm. 
Mm. So for us, uh, we are really a big user of, of data. Mm. Uh, and I think also that going forward, I think we need to be better at sharing, not, not uh, company secret, but sharing generic data uh, across industries. I think we have a lot of things to learn from each other. So uh, that's at least from our side, mm. uh, an extremely important tool for us to become better every day is to analyze data. And to, to follow up on that, I think it's really, really important that you know, the people out there, our joint customers or friends, uh, understand that they have to have a data strategy. Mm. And a data strategy is about you know, what kind of data do you want to collect? How do you collect that data? How do you store it? How do you secure it? How long do you store what? I mean, it's, it's all about parts of your data strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, and many years ago, I was told you know, to understand the difference between a human brain and a computer that does big data is that you know, the further up in the organization um, a manager is, the more of a management summary you get, less and less information. <laughs> um, but a computer that does big data has no value with little data with small amounts of data. It really finds the intelligent solution in all the data that we humans can, can't even you know, take in. So we need to have a data strategy, and with that, we can find you know, sustainable uh, solutions, but also you know, all kind of uh, new ways of going about our lives. Mm. There's a lot of talk about uh, data as the new capital. But it is really true if we talk uh, in context about it. Data is uh, what you can start to inform your business by doing just smarter, better, reaching further. But if you uh, are to harvest or be the collector of many companies' data, there needs to be a huge element of trust in that. Mm -hmm. Meaning that one of the largest sustainability issues for us is trust. And trust is very often uh, exchanged uh, with uh, transparency. Mm. Uh, and if we are to collaborate on the biggest challenges that we face together, we have to be more transparent. We have to understand nobody will trust Microsoft with their data if they can't really read out loud and see very clearly what happens with my data. Uh, how is it stored? Uh, when we capitalize on many people using our platforms, there's an added knowledge a capital surplus in a way. How do we harvest and use that data for the smartest way? For example, to protect uh, data centers and customer data better. Because if we didn't do this together, we wouldn't be as smart and enlightened as we are when going together. And sustainability is almost always about that, doing more together, not just the align gang doing it alone, but, but in it together. Mm, thank you. Eric, you had a comment? Yeah, we have, we have the same challenge as, as, uh, as Kongsberg has as with many other sectors, probably most sectors where we have con electrical controlled machinery, uh, we collect enormous amounts of data. Probably 99% and more of the data we collect, we never use. And, and the artificial intelligence and the machine learning make, enables us to be able to find patterns and, and, uh, and extract uh, management information from, these, uh, from this uh, intelligence and enables us to better plan replacement, better plan maintenance, and for any uh, investment that you can postpone, uh, it's the best investment. As uh, my colleague said in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Tafio once. Mm. I think also that, you know, um, with I think especially these times, we have seen the importance of being connected and, and, and be able to connect data. We have been you know, limited by uh, traveling restrictions, et cetera. And I think for Kongsberg, we have seen that we are globally, we are in 40 countries, we are in 120 locations. Uh, and, and customers trust us to, you know, to support them wherever they are in the world and, and either building or operating. And we have seen that you know, to be able to connect and to, in a safe way, download data, mm. uh, to be able to understand the problem or the, uh, the thing that the operator want to, uh, us to look into. Uh, the only way is actually to collect data. Mm. Uh, and and uh, we have actually seen, and I think this period will change us as a uh, service provider. Mm. I think we will do much more uh, remotely. 
Uh, that is good for the environment mm. because uh, not good for the air, air uh, <laughs> planes, but <Yeah. laughs> uh, but I think it's good for the environment. And yeah. I, I think also that you know, uh, if you're going to be better at something, you have to you have to really measure yourself, and that's where the data comes in uh, because. It's all about what we are doing and not what we are saying. Everybody can say something, but are we actually de delivering? And that is how I want them to measure us, uh, the mm -hmm. customer. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Well, sitting between companies that represent so much tradition and uh, solid values with their customers, be it 200 years of industrial history or uh, almost, I think, in parallel, the same amount of years as Microsoft has existed with, with Atea, helping people you know, take uh, the best out of technology available. Um, what's the challenge for us is that we need, to, um, we need to work with a lot of customers that actually pose a lot of the biggest threats to success. And when they realize that they do and want to change, who can partner? Who can walk that extra mile with them to transform their way of doing their business? Mm. It is quite often you see in sustainability debates that there's this new kid on the block, there's this new idea, mm. doing things totally different. That is great, I'm all for it. But I also think we have to be partnering with many of those that have given energy in the fossil way, that have done uh, use of land or use of water in a way that they're not so proud of any longer, but they want to change. And how can technology, how can new solutions help that? So you will see Microsoft partner with a lot of companies that stand out as some of the biggest, you know, on the challenging side to mm. achieve these goals, but that's the only way we actually can accomplish it. Mm. So it's doing both, helping the new kids on the block with a totally fantastic, mind-blowing new technologies, mm. but also transforming all those traditional companies that still have a lot to offer, but they want to do it in a different way. And I think we've, we've come to a time where there's no one that disagrees. No. <laughs> you know, it, it's all a matter of do how it. can we get there? What is best for us? Um, you know, what, what, what kind of investments or, you know, returns can we get from what we do? Who should we partner with? I mean, there is no one that disagrees. 10 years ago, five years, well, there is one guy over in the US that might disagree, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Um, but most people do not disagree on what we're saying. So we just have to force the progress a little faster. I think how, that's where it is. And how can you do that? How can you represent four large incumbents in different arenas? Is there anything you can think of as leaders for these companies to say, OK, I have an idea. Let's make this go faster. The way we saw that COVID had the positive effect of going faster. I, I think, if I should steal the word here for a moment, I, I really have this, you know, poor understanding of why Norway, of every country in Europe, has the least recycling of electronics. We we bring back the least products. I'm not sure if it is because we don't need the money, you know, about recycling it, or if we haven't been, you know, good enough uh, exploring this or explaining it. But we need to start recycling. You know, one thing is glass, plastic, paper, mm. but these are finite element uh, in these products. We we need to stop, you know, just spreading them around. We have to recycle them. That that's my, you know, number one this year. I think yeah, it was. Uh, um, yeah, I was thinking about something oh, else. Oh, the previous. Okay, yeah. let's jump to David and then Eric. I, I think w what we can offer probably two things. Uh, I said that we take on more, so we better do it smarter. I mean, there's no use of, of using our data centers if it's actually putting a, a worse footprint on the planet than having thousands of them. Uh, so uh, building bitter, bigger needs to be better mm -hmm. uh, or uh, certainly smarter. But the other uh, thing is that we can provide now the learned technology uh, appliance uh, to the second and third and, and fourth user, meaning that you can actually start your innovation where someone else has uh, built 85% for you. Uh, so uh, on our cloud, Azure, uh, you can actually find a lot of ready-made solutions that uh, a startup or a 200-year-old industrial conglomerate uh, can use to speed up their own innovation. Mm -hmm. And I strongly believe in the power uh, of speeding things up because we do not have a lot of time. No. <laughs> mm. Eric? Uh, following up on what you said, Stena, I think the, uh, the m m biggest challenge why we are not recycling as we should is that it's 
doesn't have enough economic incentives for us. We, computer equipment is just too cheap uh, to get hold of and get rid of in a, in a business, uh, on a business profit uh, mm. uh, statement. And, and so, so it is with also private recycling. It doesn't matter economically. Uh, and that's our challenge. Also, energy and other uh, raw material that we acquire is too cheap for us, and therefore we squander it. We don't use it uh, in an environmentally good manner. No, but I, I agree. But there has to be. There has. I, I agree that there has to be a financial motivation there, but there also has to be another motivation. And I think we need to. We need to. Uh, you know, tell that story. Uh, if you think your PCs are too, too cheap, I can raise the price, of course. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can yeah. I comment? Uh, uh, I, I agree with what you're saying, and recycle is important. But I think also we have to start with, I'm coming back to the ocean, because I think ocean is so important for so many of these sustainability goals. And we know that uh, the population in the world is growing. We need to produce more food. Uh, and we need to do it in a more sustainable way, uh, and we have limited space on land. We have to produce more food in the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, and just before I come here today, I was visiting a, a customer who is, is in the uh, fish, uh, fishing uh, industry, uh, and we are doing a lot of things in Norway now to increase the farming of, of uh, species. But, but we have a challenge there, a, a sustainability challenge. And I think here again, we have to build on what the knowledge that we have from other industries, like the oil and gas, like the fishery from, from uh, the centuries back, and, and then start thinking differently how we uh, farm, uh, because uh, this is a really a, a, a must for us to eat more out of the, uh, out of the ocean. And then we also need to, um, uh, to monitor uh, the ocean, uh, meaning a, a lot of the fishing today is illegal. Actually, I think it's around 15%. Mm -hmm. If we can stop that uh, you know, and, and uh, protect the stocks in the ocean in a, a sustainable way, uh, we can feed the planet uh, as it's growing. So I think uh, you know, to, to really look into the ocean um, and see how, uh, and we need to start today, uh, and we can start today because we have the technology. Mm -hmm. We don't need to find new technology uh, to get the ultimate uh, solution. So, so we need to start today. And mm -hmm. I think this is one of the paradoxes because when we think of technology, everyone says it has to be innovative and exciting. But actually, as you already said uh, yesterday, Sainad, it's something about the existing technologies that might be applied in new ways. And you had a different example that is quite related to Gaer the salmon and the IoT. Yeah, and I, I mean, I've learned so much about the ocean the last couple of years after we started working with um, IBM on, mm -hmm. uh, on a food trust solution for, I mean, we made it for the, the fish farming of salmon, but it, it doesn't really stop there. That's, that's where we are at right now. To use blockchain, which most people have heard of but don't really understand, but it is a way of collecting information that is transparent but also secure so you can't man manipulate the information after it's entered the chain. Um, and by doing this from egg to plate, um, you know, we, we can secure that the fish is actually what it says that it's supposed to be, mm. that it's fed exactly what it's supposed to be, mm. that the medicine it's got is exactly what it's supposed to be, which is good for the food, of course, but it's also good for the environment that the fish has grown in. Mm. And to be able to make this very transparent, um, it's actually a solution that we have now installed. We're not building anything for the solution. We're building a small percentage of every kilo that is traced through the solution. Mm. So it's also a new way of collectively build a solution and getting paid for the solution. And I think you do a lot of development in terms of technology. And what do you think, could you reflect maybe on how can we use sustainability as a driver to find these new technologies instead of these just innovations because we want to do something new? What kind of strategy and culture would that um, ask for in Kongsberg, do you think? 
or maybe you have it already, then you could just tell us the answer. That's perfect. I, I think, uh, you know, um, for us, it's uh, sustainability is important for us. But if it was not a business opportunity, it would be impossible. So, so that is the kind of basic. Mm. Uh, but the good thing is that we see so many opportunities in the ocean, in the space, uh, and uh, it's actually the problem to choose what you're going to go for. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the, the, the way Kongsberg is working, we have in Norway, we have 2,500 uh, sub suppliers, uh, small, uh, medium size, uh, uh, working together with us on, on, on a daily basis. And I think uh, the combination of our, let's say, technology, uh, technology powerhouse mm. with this uh, agile, smaller, uh, really enthusiastic uh, companies. Uh, together we can find new solutions by combining technologies, mm. uh, existing technologies and new solutions, uh, combining them and, and, and by that uh, introduce new, more sustainable way of, of uh, dealing with, uh, with the ocean, with the energy, with the transport. So it, it's a combination, I think. So your observation is that if we couple the startup environments and you as incumbents, we can actually have even a stronger driver in sustainability? I think it's, it's, uh, it's a must. Uh, I think it's not, not either or. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this, the startups, they need bigger companies to help them, uh, you know, to support them, to bring them out in the world. Uh, and uh, obviously, we are doing a lot of our inno innovation ourselves. Mm. But sometimes we, we need some, some help. Uh, not sometimes, we need it all the time. <laughs> but I think also uh, important for Kongsberg is you know, that we should really look into going forward is to how we can cooperate across industrial. Right. Because there is a lot of things to learn also uh, across industrial, uh, not only focus on our own industry. Mm. Eric, is this, sorry. No, I was just going to say on, on your point that the, the startups needs, you know, grown-ups, so to speak, and especially in a small country like Norway, mm -hmm. because the, you know, for a, for a startup, the home, home market is the easiest mm -hmm. to start with. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the U.S., that home market is pretty much different than what it is if you start up mm -hmm. in Olesund or in Norway as, mm -hmm. as such. So I think especially here, uh, we need to help you know, the incumbent have to help the startups. It, it, it's the same as an, you, can, you can compare it with an ecosystem. You, uh, you have the small startups and you have the big companies and they all need to act together and they are mutually depending on each other, especially in the longer term to, to renew uh, its technology base, its competence base and the developing new business models. Mm. And we need younger people to chase us. They're the future, I hope. <laughs> not decide, not decide Look for everything. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I think we, we need uh, a diversity, in, in, uh, of course, in, uh, in our organization. We need a mix of uh, more seniority and, and younger people who uh, look at the world a little bit different from us above 40, 50. 50. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm, but I'm very optimistic. Uh, I, just before I come here, I, I visited the uh, SMK uh, and I got the introduction from the sustainability board in Kongsberg uh, Maritime. Mm. And uh, the personal engagement really uh, encouraged me. You know, the, these people are really personally mm. involved in making a difference and, and that's given me mm. optimistic. Mm. I think what we see is that this agenda brings a new dimension of purpose mm. to going mm. to work. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but it also brings in something else, and that is for businesses to understand that community is not extra. It's essential. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and we're part of that community. The community is not the company itself. It's not like a catch-all strategy, although a large company sometimes could be mistaken for thinking that way. But <laughs> we need to place ourselves in that society around. And uh, what I've shown, and you listen to Pakistan as well, there's no way we will be able to do what we have set forth without collaborating with others. Mm -hmm. It's only through going together with others we can achieve these great goals of uh, putting back CO2 mm. uh, more than what we've ever um, released mm. and also be able to replenish uh, more water than we've ever uh, consumed. Uh, and it's needed because these are uh, resources the world is in desperate need of uh, or that we need to reduce the emissions in order to preserve the, c the climate. So these are definitely community issues, and business is part of that. Mm. 
and it's very important and it's a very strong driver for us who are business leaders who want to have improve our profitability and productivity in our organizations. Sustainability uh, is really about effective and much more effective use of resources. And that is also very good for business and, and financial profits. Mm. So we know let's, let's, let's use the have, let's have the force with us. We know that the generations that are coming up today are driven by purpose, much more yeah. so. Of course, we all are at some point, but this is one of the things that really is key in talking about these generations. And their purpose is often a better world, mm. a better tomorrow, sustainability. And how do you, how do you embrace that to, to make sure that uh, your incumbents can, can track into that without being so big that you don't have that forest of startups, for example, around you? No, but as I said in the beginning, and I think we're getting closer to the end here, that it's all about getting inspiration. Mm. You know, inspiring people or getting inspiration from different sources. And, and young or old, women or men or, you know, whatever, we need all the inspiration, we need all the ideas, and, uh, and I think, I, I'm very optimistic, mm. like many here have said, uh, because we've turned, we've turned a corner. Mm. Um, and, and most of what we now do, which is called sustainable or sustainable strategy, is actually profitable. And I, I think, you know, we just have to speed up. Mm. Steinar, David, Geir. Eric, thank you for sharing some of your thoughts on this really important topic. I think our time has been up for a while, but they're too polite to tell us. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks.